long ago, one evening, as the sun was setting over the white roofs of Basra, a pink glow. The tailor and his wife were returning home, and they saw a little man, a little beggar. They knew this little beggar was the best storyteller, the best joke teller, the best singer in all of Basra. So they invited him to their house where he would regale them with stories. After a short time there in the tailor's house, they fed him. They gave him a piece of white fish. But when the little man started to eat the white fish, a bone got caught in his throat. He fell from his stool upon the floor on his back. <laughs> At first, the tailor and his wife laughed. Perhaps this was another of his japes. But then they saw that he was still. My wife, what have we done? We invite this man to our house and we have killed him. Whatever will happen to us, our reputation, our very lives. Here, we will wrap him in a carpet. And so they did. They wrapped him in a carpet and there they carried him from their house and into the streets of Basra. It was growing dark. There were still people around. Our child has the fever. Our child is sick so that people would stay away. But one woman said, follow us. I will take you to my master. He is a doctor, a Jewish doctor. Follow me. So they followed this woman, and they came to the house of the doctor where there were steps that led up to his front door. At the top of the steps, she went inside. Quickly, they unfurled the carpet, set the little man on the top step and took the carpet with them, of course. Now it was dark. The doctor opened the door, but not seeing the little man lying on the top step, he stumbled into him, and the little beggar's body went tumbling down the steps to the bottom. The doctor followed him down. Oh. What has happened here? This man comes to be treated, and I have killed him. Quickly, he lifted the body, carried him up the steps and into the house. He wondered what he should do, and then he remembered that his neighbour was the Muslim, the steward of the royal kitchen. If I leave him in his backyard, where he stores his sugar and flour, then he will get the blame. He lowered the body of the little beggar, and it leant there between a sack of flour and a sack of sugar. And at that moment, the Muslim steward of the royal kitchens returned home. He heard a noise. Rats again, taking my sugar. He picked up a heavy club and went into his backyard in the shadows. He saw a figure. <coughs> Stealing my sugar, are you? He struck the little beggar on his back. The little beggar fell to the ground. What have I done? This little man has come to steal some sugar, but I have repaid him with death. What will happen to my reputation? The Muslim picked up the little man. Now it was late. He walked out into the streets. He carried him down a narrow alleyway towards the canal where he would surely dispose of the body. And as he came along that narrow alleyway, he heard a singing voice of a drunk man. Of course, it was a Christian, a moneylender. He had so much alcohol in his blood. <laughs> he sang at the top of his voice until he stopped still, and there in the shadows, where the Muslim had propped the little man. You! You are here to mug me, to rob me! And he seized the little beggar by the shoulders and started bashing his head against the wall. There was such a commotion that at that moment, from the shadows, there appeared the officers to arrest him.
Christian moneylender was arrested for murder. to see an execution. The scaffold stood high, the noose hanging. Before the crowd stood the governor, and beside him upon his throne, the sultan. Next to them, upon a small table, the body of the murdered man. Before the governor stood the Christian moneylender. The governor spoke. What have you to say for yourself, a man who has done much business with our sultan? I am guilty. You should punish me. I have no choice. The Christian moneylender will hang by the neck until dead. The moneylender was led on the steps to the scaffold, the noose was put around his neck, the crowd were hushed in anticipation. But at that moment from the crowd there came a cry. He's innocent! Set him free! You should punish me! And stepping forward was none other than the Muslim steward of the royal kitchens. It is I that murdered the man. I found him stealing sugar from my backyard. I struck him with a club. I killed him. I hid the body where the moneylender found him. You, said the governor, you who look after the kitchens and feed our sultan, how can this be? I have no choice. The steward must be hanged by the neck until... Yeah. Now the Muslim steward was led to the steps of the scaffold. The rope was taken from round the moneylender's neck and put around his. He looked up to the heavens, to his God. And at that moment, there came a cry from the crowd. He's innocent! Set him free! You should punish me! And who was standing there? Well. The Jewish doctor. It was I. I murdered him. You see, he came to my house to be treated and I kicked him down my steps in the darkness. And, uh, I feared for my life. I took his body and I put it in my neighbor, the Muslim's backyard. I am the guilty one. You who have treated our sultan on so many occasions. You. The Jewish doctor must be by the until The crowd were getting restless. They were waiting. They were waiting for an execution. That's why they were here so early in the morning. But from among them there came a cry. He's innocent. Set him free. You should punish me. Who was it? The tailor. It was the tailor. 
You punished me, said the tailor. I killed him. He came to my house. We invited him. We fed him with white fish. A bone got caught in his throat. He choked. He's dead. We killed him. I hid the body in front of the doctor's house. You, who made the golden robes that the sultan is wearing here, shining in the morning light. I have no choice. The tailor... <coughs> So it was that the tailor was led up the steps and the rope was taken and put upon his neck and he prepared to die. Now, finally, finally, the people would see what they had come to see. Until at that moment there came a cry from the crowd and an old man said, Set him free. What? said the governor. Surely someone is going to pay the price. What are you? An old man with a long grey beard. He held a small leather bag. It was none other than the barber. There is a mystery to this small man's death. The small man walked over a small barber to where the little beggar's body lay upon the table. And the mystery is, he's still breathing. The barber opened his bag and took out a pair of tongs and a pot of ointment. He rubbed the ointment onto the throat of the little beggar. He reached into his mouth with the tongs and pulled out the fishbone. And with that, the little beggar sat up. <laughs> You have saved my life. A fishbone was stuck in my throat. I thought that I choked and would die. You tried to help me. First you kicked me down some steps. <laughs> that didn't work. Then you struck me on my back. That didn't help. Then you bashed my head against a wall. But that didn't help me either. But now you have plucked the bone from my throat and I am well. Thank you all for being here. Finally, the Sultan in his golden robe stood. Remarkable. Never have I heard such a strange story. This story must be written in gold upon parchment and stored in the royal library. The little beggar said, your Majesty, I beg to differ. There are stranger stories that I can tell. Stranger stories still. And as you are all here gathered in the streets of Basra, let me regale you with one of those strange